Her life was much better than probably any of the movies she ever appeared in. She was really a very modern, contemporary woman who was kind of stuck, somehow landed in the 40s. She was known as the most beautiful woman on, the, on Earth. You know, I, I think it's incumbent upon us to salute her and so, you know, any way, any way we can. In the late 1930s, a young actress quickly rose to fame. Hedy Lamarr, the most beautiful woman in film, was the star of many movies that defined a generation. In addition to her cinematic accomplishments, Hetty patented a device that became the crutch of secure military communications and mobile phone technology. There's a reason she isn't commonly known. Even her own children didn't believe her. This is because Lamar faced a barrier that is still relevant today, sexism in the scientific community that makes it harder for women to be seen in STEM-related fields. Lamar proved she was clever as well as beautiful by co-inventing a frequency hopping signal to help remotely guide torpedoes during World War II. While the patent was largely ignored during the war, her spread spectrum technology was pivotal in the creation of Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and GPS. During the 1940s, institutionalized sexism was everywhere. Despite women taking a stand in the workplace, pamphlets and brochures patronizing female workers became commonplace. Yes, women workers do present problems, Joe. It's tough, I know, but there are thousands of others, just like you all over the country, facing the same problems. While there were an increasing number of female scientists helping the war effort, they were stereotypically considered nerdy and aloof. As the Mar was typecast in many films as an exotic beauty and femme fatale character, many refused to believe she could be both actress and inventor. I believe, you know, as usual, she was ahead of her time, and it was kind of shelved, and I don't, the government kind of laughed it off, and, you know, what's this movie star talking about? And it was kind of, wasn't used. And However, she proved them wrong. Despite having no scientific training, Lamar was naturally clever. She gained a lot of her knowledge of weapon systems from her first husband's, Friedrich Mandel's, business meetings. Mandel was an arms dealer, selling weapons and ammunition to Mussolini and Hitler. During the years before World War II, Mandel was conducting research in weapons control. By her own account, Mandel kept Lamar at his side during his meetings, a silent witness to technical discussions that foreshadowed World War II. After four years, she left her fascist husband and traveled to London, where she met MGM studio head Louis B. Mayer, who offered her a movie contract in Hollywood. She starred in many movies and quickly became a household name. It was also in Hollywood where she began her secret life in inventing. Howard Hughes, an airplane designer and film director, fell in love and gave her a laboratory, telling her that his scientists would do anything she asked. During this time, she tinkered with every idea that came into her head. I thought the airplane was too slow. I decided that's not right. It shouldn't be square, the, the, the wing. So I bought a book of fish and I bought a book of birds and then used the fastest bird with a, connected it with the fastest fish. And I drew it together and showed it to how I choose and I said, you're a genius. However, World War II was still running rampant in Europe, and the Mar grew furious hearing reports of the sinking of the SS city of Benares, which had been carrying 90 child evacuees from Britain to Canada. One reason the Nazis were winning at the time was because they had set up a chokehold around England. The Nazi U-boats were bombing every ship that tried to send supplies to England, and every ship that tried to send refugees out of England. Das Boot des Corvettenkapitän Zapp. Corvettenkapitän Zapp versenkte bisher 80,900 Bordeaux-register Tonnen feindlichen Schiffsraum. The submarines were able to elude the Allies' attacks because the Nazis would block or jam the radio signals that guided the Allies' torpedoes. She wanted to go to Washington, D.C. to testify her knowledge that she learned from her ex-husband's business meetings, but nobody took her seriously. So she decided to take matters into her own hands and started sketching plans for a device that could guide torpedoes without the signal being jammed. Lamar needed a partner, and she met the perfect man at a Hollywood event, avant-garde composer George Antile. Antile was a responsive audience for Lamar's ideas. He was a former U.S. munitions inspector, and more importantly, he was an expert in making machines communicate with one another. His groundbreaking work, The Ballet Mechanique, was written to include the synchronization of 16 player pianos. Lamar and Antile joined together, and after many months of trial and error, they obtained a joint patent in 1941 for a secret communication system. It worked like this. A signal would be passed between a ship and a torpedo. The signal would be extremely brief, but also hop from frequency to frequency along the radio spectrum. 
The hopping was automatic, and the genius of the creation was that the shifting signals were synchronized. This meant that the torpedo and the ship would stay connected, even as the signal changed frequency. They also built in a false signal that would be released, which could confuse anybody trying to listen in. The false signal and the hopping frequencies were what made this creation so important. It ensured the torpedo guiding signal couldn't be jammed or blocked. After the ideal was completed, they sent it to the National Inventors Council in hopes that it would be utilized by the U.S. Navy. Eventually, the plans reached Charles F. Kettering, a famous inventor and talented businessman, who immediately recommended it to the Navy. The plans reached the Navy at a terrible time. Just a few days after the Navy received the plans, the Japanese attacked Pearl Harbor. When the Navy first sent off their submarines into the Pacific Ocean, they implemented a new technology gained earlier from the National Inventors Council. The tech was supposed to be a proximity device that would make sure torpedoes didn't explode before they hit a ship. However, this caused many torpedoes to never explode, even after they hit Japanese warships. This caused the Navy to go back to their old torpedoes, and they refused to accept any more new inventions. The Mar and Antile, after a few months of silence, received a letter declining their invention. The Mar, desperate to help the war effort, went to work at the Hollywood Canteen and sold war bonds, resorting to using her beauty instead of her brains. In the short term, the Lamar Antile device was ignored and forgotten. The articles that did mention the patent often held scathing remarks towards Hetty, showing the deep-set belief of the time that a woman couldn't have the beauty of a model and the brains of a scientist. However, in the long term, their invention was fundamental. The U.S. military and other national security agencies developed multiple systems based on the Lamar Antal patent, like a remote control system for the corporal rocket, radio guidance systems for the Jupiter missile, the phantom radio system developed by General Electric, and many more. According to Robert Price, an electronics consultant at Lexington, Mass., who worked on research and development of communication systems for the military and industry, one of the most important applications of Lamar's device is the Millstar system. The Millstar system was designed to launch intercontinental nuclear missiles, and it's proof that her technology survived the present day in one major system that the security of the United States still depends on. The device was used on radios during the Cuban Missile Crisis and during the Vietnam War to program surveillance drones. However, many of these creations were created and implemented before 1959, the year when the patent expired. Because the plans were used secretly, the Mar and Antile received no payment and no recognition. She literally never got one penny for it. The device was later taken up by engineers at Sylvania and became the predecessor of wireless communications. The basis of her technology, the frequency hopping signal, was used to create GPS, Wi-Fi, and Bluetooth, leading Lamar to earn the EFF Pioneer Award to become the first woman to receive the Invention Convention's Bowlby Nass Spirit of Achievement Award and getting her very own Google Doodle. She also inspired other female scientists. Danahela Kabrich, a professor in electrical engineering at UCLA, talks about her interest with Lamar. I was fascinated by wireless communications, and so I joined the all-male UCLA lab that was developing wireless system prototypes. I discovered Lamar while researching the introductory chapter of my thesis. Imagine finding a glamorous female engineer who not only shares your interest, but had contributed the foundational principles of your research. Throughout history, sexism has stopped women from being recognized and built a barrier that makes it harder for women to succeed in science. Hedy Lamar was one of many brilliant women that broke a hole in this barrier. Her ability as both actress and inventor proved she didn't have to sacrifice her femininity to be smart. She wasn't the first, and certainly won't be the last woman to have been ignored by her peers, but she took a crucial step towards breaking down this wall and created a lasting impact that will never be forgotten.